What's going on, Internet? Scott here. I am at Maker Faire. Now, we've covered 3D printers on the show before, but did you know that those 3D files that you're using to print in 3D can actually be used to print something in 2D that looks 3D? It's true. And those printers are out there on the show floor, so we're going to go check them out. Can you guys tell me a little bit about Modelbox 3D and what you guys do? So this is a 3D printing solution that anyone can afford with the printer they already own. Any inkjet or laser printer, and they can take any 2D or 3D artwork, slice it up, print it out from home. So it's really simple. It's just 28 slices of inkjet printable transparency, or 7, 8.5 by 11 sheets cut into quarters. And uh, you print it at home on your own printer, and you just slide it into a frame, and you end up with a really nice 3D visualization of your work. You can change it out really easily in about 10 minutes whenever you want. And uh, I think it's a nice bridge between 3D printing and something that's just a nice art piece. Now I can tell that uh, people would want to do this for uh, kind of rapid rapid prototyping. Exactly. Are a lot of people yeah. using this that's for rapid? What we first did it for. So basically, what you can do with this is you you have the ability to print something way faster than you can on a 3D printer, mm -hmm. and for way less cost. And you can actually see the volumetric display of it. Cool. All right. Modelbox 3D. Look forward to the fall. All right. I'm here with Cameron. And Cameron, you have some awesome hologram stuff. Can you yeah. explain what they are and how you make them? Yeah. So we use a proprietary film process and um, lasers to print a light refraction pattern onto the film. So if you look really close at these, there are small elements that we call hogles. They're almost like pixels on a TV screen. But what's different about these is that in the hogle, there are over a thousand views of that one millimeter of space. Wow. So that's how, when you move around it, it's a, you're able to see all the different sides and it looks like it's moving. However, it's, it's stationary. How far can I walk around it before the image doesn't no, no, is no longer working for me to see it? Yeah, so on a horizontal image like this one, you can see all the way around it. However, there's a 45 degree view cone that you have to be within in order to see it. Oh yeah, I can see the back of this Ford car. How long does it take to create one of these images? Yeah, so the print time is about two to three hours, depending on the size. But then there's rendering time and data generation time as well. So our production time is about seven to ten days. How much would it cost for someone like me to get one of these hanging in my home? So if you use the Autodesk software, you can get an image for $100, and that comes with this frame and this light as well. Okay. So. And then also we do other sizes as well and the price goes up from there. Really cool holograms that you can put on your wall. It's like we're living in the future, but it's now. America, take that. So you probably have a 3D printer already, but what are you going to print? How about yourself? And how are you going to do that? You need a 3D scanner and we're here with Lynx Labs looking at their 3D scanner. So can you uh, tell me how this works? Sure. So we made the Lynx A camera. The Lynx A camera is basically the first point and shoot 3D scanner. So you move it around just like a regular video camera and everything you look at is automatically added to the 3D model. So, you know, just as easily as you can shoot video, you can create models that are printable with a 3D printer. How does it work exactly? So the way it works, there's, there's three parts of it. Uh, the first part is like a 3D scanner, like everyone's heard of the Kinect. We have a sensor like that on the device. The second part is uh, powerful computing hardware. So we've got a great graphics card and a, and a central processor that can crunch a lot of data. And the third part, the most important part, is like the software brains. So we wrote some really great software that can take all that data that's coming in and piece it together into a meaningful representation of 3D content. How long does it take to create a 3D scan of, say, a person? Uh, so if you want to do a person, that takes about 25 seconds. Can I can I get myself yeah, scanned? Yeah, sure. Let's do a scan. All right, cool. I used to be a, uh, a figure model, so I can hold my pose very well. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Yeah. You did a pretty good job holding that. Yeah. I'm in 3D. I want to print that out somewhere. You totally can. The camera that's launching, the $2,000 camera, which starts shipping in June 15th, uh, that one has an accuracy of about half a millimeter. Wow, and what's the accuracy on this one? Three millimeters. Three millimeters. Wow. So we, we just went from Half-Life 1 graphics to Half-Life 2 graphics. Man, and we'll never okay. see Half-Life 3 graphics. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, sometime, like, when we're all in our 80s. When the and... game finally comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that about wraps up our Maker Fair 3D printer, but not 3D printer roundup. If you like what you saw here, leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. For TFN, I'm Scott Bromley saying I cannot wait to 3D print myself. I love 3D printing. It's the wave of the future. It really is. You can write it.
3D printed wave. It takes a really long time to form, but once it's there, it'll hold steady. This is me surfing, by the way. Not very good at charades. <laughs> 